One day, Gustav woke up dead. He sat up in bed, blinked several times in quick succession. He jumped out of bed, packed up his backpack, and walked straight out the door. His first act was to walk deep into the dark woods that surrounded his family cottage to find a bear. Why, you may ask? Well, this bear was known for raiding Gustav's chickens, doing its business on the freshly cut grass, more than once, I might add, and wantonly misbehaving in Gustav's mother's flower beds. What a rascal! Deep in the woods, Gustav found the bear by a thicket, Silently rolling up his pyjama sleeves, Gustav crept up to the bear. He slowly swung his arm as far back as he could, and bam! He slapped that bear right on its bare bottom. What a riot! The bear's blood began to boil, and as quick as lightning, it turned around to meet its attacker. Alas, the bear could not see Gustav, as little Gustav could no longer be seen by living creatures. Panic struck to the heart of the villainous bear, and with sweaty sideways looks, that bear ran at top speed, 
whimpering into the woods. Water hoot. With his curiosity satisfied, he continued on his adventurous path. Onward, Gustave, onward. Let's slow things down for a moment so I can catch my breath and tell you some more details about Gustave. Well, he lived in a small town, in a small house, with a small family. Mother, father and little Gustav. Gustav's life was happy, and he was in trouble often, which is just enough that it was absolutely normal. He was not exactly a troublemaker, he just found himself in mischief most of the time. He was a good-natured little fellow. He was not sick a day in his life, and by all accounts he was healthy, except for the thing that killed him, of course. So now you know all this, I'm sure it's no surprise to you that Gustav moved on through the town, looking for fun and indulging his every whim. Onward, Gustav, onward. still haunted the little town, doing all the things he wished, unencumbered by consequence, burden or impediment. 
Then, possibly, quite by accident, Gustav came upon his own funeral. In the graveyard was his little brown coffin and a small group of people. The parish priest was praying in his white robes. Gustav saw his mother and father holding each other. His aunt was there, some friends from school, all dressed in black. His school principal even came and some local dogs who were just curious as to why everyone was there. I wonder what they all think of me, when they think of me, Gustav thought. Just then a strange thing happened. Gustav dreamily cast his backpack aside and began to dance to an invisible tune. A smooth, gliding and beautiful dance. He'd never danced at all before this, and this dance had overtaken him. If you can close your eyes and even half imagine it, your heart would be adrift with the joy and heartache of its sight. With a flowing gesture, he tenderly reached to hold his mother's hand, and to his surprise, her spirit came out to dance with him. He touched the hands of the other people at the funeral, and one by one, and two by two, they all danced together. Each flowing movement told the stories of how they met and what they meant to each other. You see, dear listener, that what Gustav was experiencing is something that happens regularly, but is unseen by the living. Do you know why everyone looks so cold and sad at funerals? Well, their spirits leave their bodies for just a little while to dance with the people they loved. One last time. One last spin. And when the spirits return to their bodies, they can remember not only their grief, but also the good times. It's called the dance of letting go. Ah, to dance with those you love. Has there ever been anything more joyful in this world? Just then, Gustav's attention was taken by two butterflies floating by. They were ducking and weaving on the afternoon breeze. Gustav was entranced. He left the funeral behind, and without a second thought, he followed the butterflies' meandering path up a green hill to a splendid view. He sat down under a big birch tree to observe the smells and sounds of this world, to take it all in. The sun was warm, and white clouds floated in the pale blue sky. What treasure exists that can match this day, he thought. Is this heaven?
By sheer coincidence, Gustav looked down the valley, and he saw the bear whose bottom he slapped earlier. It was fishing in the river with its cub, and suddenly Gustav was filled with shame. He shouted across the valley, I should have been more kind to you, Mother Bear. I hope you can forgive me. I understand now that you were just doing what bears do. Gustav's thoughts of gratitude and awe danced and floated easily on his mind, just as the butterflies did in the afternoon breeze. He had almost fully forgotten himself when his mind wandered to his parents. Gustav made his way home. When he arrived, Gustav's father was standing by himself in Gustav's room in darkness. He watched his father tenderly picking up things that belonged to his son. Gustav's father's heart was so broken he could cry no more. His eyes lingered on each object as he put them back in their place. Gustav's father was grieving. Gustav's father picked up a small music box and it suddenly began to play. There was a little more life left in the spring, he thought. It was a tune he knew well as it played every night before Gustav went to bed. He turned the key to hear its full tune one last time. You see, Gustav saw the world as a series of doors that opened to wondrous opportunity. But his father was older and saw the world in a different way. For him, this tragedy was a reminder that life is sometimes unfair. He saw the world as a series of endings, of doors closing and of things being taken from you. the slow breaking and surrender of his dreams. Drawn by the sound of the music box, Gustav's mother entered quietly. She did not speak, and they shared the terrible sweet music together. As Gustav watched, he was filled with sorrow and he could hold it no longer. He shouted with tears in his little eyes, I'm here, father. I'm here, mother. I'm here. Can't you see me? He called out again and again until his voice was a whisper. Gustav sat down onto his bed. He thought, Life is just long enough, so you think you will live forever. If I had my time again, 
I would live each day as if it was everyone else's last. As the music slowed, Gustav's father and mother embraced in silence, and Gustav sadly moved over to tuck himself between them. Just then, no one could explain what happened. A miracle. The miracle of Gustav's story. It felt like a heat lamp, and a white light was glowing between them. Gustav's parents felt his little presence. It was unmistakable. They looked down and nestled between them. Their beautiful, mischievous little boy stood, smiling back. Their little trio, their family, together. And for one last dance, they were whole. They felt as close to heaven as anyone had ever felt. As they danced, the world stopped its spin for just a moment. Just for this moment, just for them. You see, for Gustav, the fundamental unit of love's measurement was family, his family. So they began to dance, knowing that they had somehow been granted a parting gift. As they circled the room, they felt joy, sadness, laughter and grief all at once. They laughed at the great and glorious misfortune of living and the profound gift of seeing the journey through with each other. In time, Gustav broke free from the embrace and then he was gone. He went to that place that you go, the last door. He didn't even look back, as he knew it was his time. What a brave boy. Onward, Gustav, onward. And when the music ended, and his parents' eyes met, their hands were empty and their hearts were full. In their lives, grief will never be far from them, but it will not have Gustav's face. Grief is the dance partner of love. You are truly living when you accept this as part of the deal, and you can hold them both, as the wild horses they are, as a key part of our meaning on earth. To deny grief is to lose out on the wisdom love brings. In a funny way, perhaps grief is the ghost of love.
And so we come to the end of Gustav's tale. I want to let you know, with no guile or sentimentality, that beyond grief and letting go, there is a place. This place is still and calm. The air is light with life and new appreciation. Is it heaven? I don't know. But perhaps Gustav lives there now. <laughs>